When you look up at the night sky and see that beautiful white glowing ball of cheese, you're probably familiar with the moon and know that many more just like it orbit the other planets and exoplanets. You might not be so aware that the technical term should be natural satellite to distinguish it from all those other man-made satellites we put up there. Well, you may have heard that ESA's Gaia mission has just discovered hundreds of asteroids with their very own moons. And it turns out that satellites around asteroids do exist. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, let's talk about asteroid moons. So when you hear the name Gaia, an asteroid is probably the last thing you're thinking of. ESA's Gaia mission is primarily to make the largest, most precise dynamic 3D map of our Milky Way galaxy. And it does this by continuously scanning the sky and charting the positions, distances and motions of over a billion stars with unprecedented accuracy. While monitoring our galaxy's stars, Gaia has stumbled upon 352 new asteroids, potentially with their own moons. Yes, they are moons, as the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, classifies asteroids as minor planets and any natural satellite orbiting a planet, dwarf planet, or minor planet is by definition a moon. But you might also hear them referred to as binary asteroids, not to be confused with double asteroids, where you have two asteroids of similar sizes orbiting one another. There's also the term moonlets for those that are really small. But anyway, getting back to the main story. So are these the first ever discovery of asteroid moons? Well, no, the first discovery dates back to 1993 by the Galileo spacecraft who detected Dactyl, a small moon of the asteroid Ida. But Gaia's discoveries almost doubled the number of previously known asteroid moons, raising the total to about 850 known asteroids with their own moons. But astronomers had been searching for asteroid moons way back since at least 1802, notably by William Herschel, you know, the guy who discovered Uranus. Yeah, and that looks just like Uranus. In fact, in 1901, there was already speculation that near-Earth asteroid Eros was a binary. It had a funny double-humped light curve. A light curve is a graph of an asteroid's brightness. As it rotates, it changes. However, the resolution of the telescopes at the time was not good enough to confirm this hypothesis. A mission to the asteroid in the year 2000, however, proved that the prediction was wrong. And despite the expectation that one in six asteroids are at least in a binary system, if not more, time and time again, suspected binaries turn out to be false positives. It wasn't until 2001 that the number of asteroid moon discoveries started to surge. These moons tend to be really difficult to find because they're incredibly small and far away. The angular resolution must be good enough to resolve the separations of a fraction of an arc second. And generally, the moon is typically much more fainter and completely hidden by the saturation by the brighter primary asteroid. But Gaia had a trick. It wasn't going to directly image the asteroids at all, but instead just watch them wobble. In Gaia's latest data release, it precisely pinpointed the positions and motions of over 150,000 asteroids, so precisely that scientists could see the gravitational influence of the moon on the asteroid as it tugs on it and makes it wobble. And this is exactly the same way that astronomers use to detect binary stars and exoplanets but it makes it a change to the direct imaging and radar-based approaches that are typically used, which may be biased towards very far away and large moons. This new method reveals intermediate-sized binary asteroids, 20 to 100 kilometers in size, which were previously underrepresented in the known sample of binaries. These new discoveries of asteroid moons by Gaia are significant for a number of reasons. Asteroid moons are a natural laboratory to study asteroid collisions, which is an important process in the formation and evolution of asteroids. And the presence of an asteroid moon also allows us to determine the density of the primary asteroid. And this is something which would otherwise require a flyby mission or a lander mission. 
Don't get too excited though, these potentially new discoveries may turn out to be fakes too. Gaia doesn't send back imaging data, so we can't see if these binaries are actually real. It may be that these wobble signals are not due to companions at all, but simply caused by the rotation of irregularly shaped single asteroids. And from what we know so far of asteroids, they are rarely nice and spherical, but instead very oddly shaped. They're typically erratically tumbling around our sun. But I'm sure some follow-up observations with other telescopes will help clear that up. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.